extensive view up and down the river is the most beautiful on the Mississippi. So this must be a barge pusher. I don't know what they call these boats. They're tug, tug pushers? Yeah, I guess they're tug boats. Look how low it is in the bottom to the water. The shallow draft. The Sir Randall. Mark Twain, steamboat pilot. In 1857, young Samuel Clemens began to learn the trade of steamboat pilot. In 1859, he became a licensed pilot of the lower Mississippi River. When his piloting career ended with the outbreak of the Civil War in 1861, Clemens went west out to the Nevada Territory where he first used the pen name Mark Twain in 1863 while riding for the Territorial Enterprise in Virginia City. Clemens took the name Mark Twain from the river soundings that indicated 12 feet of water, which was safe for navigation. And there's the Mark Twain touring boat. There's another one of those tugboats. There's Sir Tanny, Danny Joe. There she be. Mark Twain. And wow, look, the ticket office is a barge. God's wood. So it says. They've got a pole. It's a cigar box guitar. Of course, you need gardeners to. It's the 11th of July. This is a uh, lounge, a uh, dinner, dinner lounge. The dinner cruise. And off we go. Y'all needing a driver, let me know. I'd be glad to drive. It got wet, so it had to be rebuilt. They thought they had built it high enough that it would never flood again. But the flood of 1993 put two feet of water inside their building. And that's because the flood of 93 topped out 20 feet higher than the river is today, which put 12 feet of water over the parking lot where you got on the boat. Now also to our left, up atop the hill, you'll see the top of that small white lighthouse. This is not an official aid to navigation. It's a tribute to Hannibal's most famous citizen, Mark Twain. The original lighthouse was erected in 1935 on the 100th anniversary of Mark Twain's birth. Used to be a lady who lived atop this hill by the name of Holiday. Her husband was a steamboat pilot. So she kept a light burning in the window at night for the steamboats as they plied the river. Now, her husband was killed in a steamboat accident. And Mark Twain wrote The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. He referred to her as the Widow Douglas. Now, if you'd like a good picture of the lighthouse, hang on just a couple of minutes. As we get upstream, you'll get a much better view. I'd like to tell you just a little bit about the boat that you're riding on today. The Mark Twain was built in 1964 at the Dubuque Boiler and Boat Works in Dubuque, Iowa. It was christened the Huck Finn and taken south to New Orleans where it ran as an excursion boat for the Streckma Steamers Company. In 1982, the Mark Twain Riverboat Company purchased the vessel and we brought it to Hannibal. The boat measures 120 feet long, 33 feet wide. It's documented at 94 gross tons and when fully loaded, it draws or sits in the water six feet at the stern. We're inspected annually by the United States Coast Guard. As a matter of fact, they were here just this morning and were licensed to carry 350 passengers. Now get the cameras and cell phones ready. It's just about time to take that picture of the White House on Cardiff Hill. Coming up on our left, have an old concrete structure next to the water's edge and across the tracks is another concrete structure. Now these foundations, along with a handful of family members, are all that remain of the Stores Ice and Coal Company. They used to harvest ice on the river. Now they'd come out on the ice with teams of horses. They would saw out huge blocks of ice, then it was towed back into these buildings where it was stored in straw and sawdust and preserved for the warmer summer months ahead, at which time it was sold to the railroads, the riverboats, and the very wealthy in town 
who could afford this luxury. On up ahead of us, we have a couple of bridges that cross the river. The first one is the Mark Twain Memorial Highway Bridge. It's a four-lane structure that connects Interstate 72 in Illinois with Highway 36 in Missouri. It was opened on September 16th of the year 2001 at a cost of $1 million. And it is the second oldest structure to cross the upper Mississippi. And it's now operated by the Norfolk Southern Railway. To the left end of the bridge, you'll see a train's going to have a tough time crossing as they have the navigation span or the lift span raised to allow river traffic to the bridge. If the bridge is down and we walk through, we have to radio ahead to the bridge. At market price, they transfer the grain from their truck to the silos and bins and then later to river burning. We're going to see barges close up later in the trip. Now they primarily take on wheat, corn, soybeans, and pineapple. It is time for us to make our turn to head downstream. If we were to continue going upstream against the current, traveling the distance of just 66 miles, it's going to take us at least 20 hours till we get to a town called Nauvoo, Illinois. Heading downstream, going with the current, traveling 128 miles. 24 hours to 50 miles in yards. Also, as we make our turn, we can get back to the highway bridge. On the bridge, here you see numbers. And as the numbers go up here, they get smaller. Well, these numbers are telling us the amount of clearance we have under the bridge. So today, we are required right after the bridge. Now, we are going to head down the street. We're going to get back into the bridge. So if you're on the path of that, you can't wait to get my flow, my path. There goes a the train.
another one is, you're back at home too long at one time. <laughs> most often asked river related questions that we get are how deep is the water and how wide is the river here now back up behind us at the highway bridge the river is about three-eighths of a mile across this is one of the narrower sections of the river and that's why you see pretty built there where we're at right now is closer to one half mile wide but it is hard to tell it because of the island so, uh, depth sounder well, it's showing 32 feet of water beneath the boat across the river by the island. Today, it's about 10 feet deep. Further south you go, deeper the water gets. And by the time you're down to Norm, the river is over 100 feet deep. The pilot aboard the vessel then knew they had at least 12 feet of water to run through. And this was considered safe water for their boats. Sam Clemens was on the river for four years. First two years as an apprentice, last two as the pilot in command. He did all of his steamboating between St. Louis and New Orleans. Long into the fourth year of his steamboat career, the Civil War got close to the Mississippi and they started to shoot at the steamboat. Well, Sam Clemens was not particularly fond of being shot at, so he left the river and he went on to do other things. Now, he continued to write, and it was the fashion in those days to use a pen name or an alias. He chose the river term that he'd learned while on the Mississippi, the term that means safe water. He chose the name Mark Twain. He used this name as he lectured in the United States and abroad, and also as a wrote book for which he's now famous. That is converted into Portland cement, which is the finest quality that you can purchase. It's then shipped to all parts of the world by truck, railroad, and river barge. Established in 1903 as Universal Atlas Cement, the division of the United States Steel, this plant was built primarily to provide cement for the construction of the Panama Canal. Over the years, they provided a lot of cement for a lot of projects including the Panama Canal, the Empire State Building, the Edward Jones Dome, and just about every driveway, sidewalk, and highway that's in the Hannibal area. Time for us to make our turn to head back upstream. We're going to cross that imaginary dotted line in the center of the adventures of Tom Sawyer. He changed the names of several things. Hannibal became St. Petersburg. The Widow Holiday became the Widow Douglas. His best friend, Tom Blankenship, became Huck Finn. Laura Hawkins became Becky Thatcher. And this island, coming up on our right, became Jackson's Island. Now, we're sure this is Jackson's Island, where he put a couple of young people on a raft up around our landing. He set them paddling for Illinois. The current's going to set them down to just about the middle of this island, much in the same way that Sam Clemens and his friends came out here. Nobody lives on the islands as they flood most every spring. They're all owned by the federal government. And you're welcome to come out and camp and fish off of them if you can find a way out here. Now there is an abundance of wildlife, both Saturday night and aquatic. We have muskrat, otter, beaver, turtles, lizards, and snakes. The Audubon Society tells us there's several different variety of birds. We see a lot of ducks, geese, great blue heron, turkey vultures, seagulls, white pelicans, and occasionally a bald eagle. And at last count on Jackson's Island alone, there were well over three billion mosquitoes. Willow flies. Sort of like a jungle out there on that island. This is owned by the government. And here we have a couple barges. I don't know what they haul. They got these tops on them. Uh, 
this is a chemical barge. Down past our dock and then we'll head on into the dock ourselves. Dan River has the right of way. Big boats have the right of way. 